um, is concerned. But, but what we've uh, come to understand today is that um, whatever choices, God allow people to choose what they want. So if people decide, if people make a, make a, make a decision that is, uh, that will cost them in the end, then it's up to them to bear those consequences because God only allowed them to choose what they want. And that's the power of free will, which we appreciate. And uh, <clears throat> the other aspect that we're told is that uh, we also need to keep in mind to say that with every decision that we make, we also need to be to bear in mind that there, there's always consequences that comes. If we choose to, if we decide to choose a tyrant, we should be, we should bear in mind that we have to bear the consequences of what's going to come after. And um, yeah, I think basically, basically that, that's it. And uh, the other thing that I appreciated, I think, was the fact that we have to do all things with knowledge whether we are gaining or losing, all things should be done out of knowledge and not, and not out of ignorance. I think that's what I, that I, that's what I got, thank you. Yeah, that's, that, that's a very good summary of the, the previous session. Of course, we said that uh, these choices, they affect our, our, our outcomes. We, we, uh, we read a few scriptures, we read Jeremiah, uh, I think 29, which says, seek the peace of the land wherein you have been set captives, because in the peace of that land, when, when that land is, is at peace, you also be at peace. So, and that's what we were articulating, that that means for your land to be at peace politically, it should, should be at peace economically and deep, spiritually. So meaning you need to know how to choose your spiritual life. Who are you listening to? Remember, you are what you eat. Don't just go to church because my father goes to that church or my, my, my ancestors don't go to that church. Remember, you are a seeker. You are not a believer. You're seeking the truth. Then also, economically, you need to work hard. I've always told you that even when you're in a compound, it's, it's no excuse and say, no, Pastor, me, I don't have abilities. If you're in a, in a ghetto, we need to, to, to find out after we are done with teaching you. You need to be that person in that compound, in that ghetto, who has the biggest uh, uh, grocery shop, Kantemba. Then also, politically, we are saying the Bible bids us to seek the peace of the land, even if we are, we are not of this world. But we need to vote. To seek the peace of the land means you need to vote. Politically, in cause for you to, to be involved in, in, the, in the politics voting system. If you can bear it, you can even uh, be in politics. But I was saying, I, I, am, I, I have been chosen by God to bring the word of God to the world. So I don't participate in the things of the world because you have noticed um, men of God who have put themselves into the things of the world, how things have turned out. Politically, uh, economically, you, we are not supposed to do that. Remember, the, 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 the Adamic mind in the Bible is, uh, is considered to be uh, the beast. The beast and the, and the woman cannot be together, unless the woman is drunk. Remember, the woman is a symbol of the church. And when you go in Revelation, the woman who was riding the beast, she was drunk. She was Babylon. So, and the, the, the reason I said for me, as a man of God, not to be involved in politics, is that that is going to Im impair my, it will impair my way of looking at the world. Because remember, I'm trying to bring in the kingdom of heaven, not, not the kingdom of the earth. But we, we live on the earth. So we need to seek the peace of the land on the earth. So that's what we were talking about in the first session. Now we are in the, in the, in the next session for those who are not in the first session. But of course, uh, the, the YouTube will be, will be put on YouTube and the videos will be put on YouTube. You, you, you can catch up. So we go now in this segment.
Mwape, uh, begin to read from where uh, we, are, we are ended, and all of you, you're welcome. And we, this platform is basically for the truth, the word, not any human ideology or, or, or thinking. We do everything through the Bible. Mwape, continue. Okay, so I think I was correct. First Samuel. Okay. First Samuel chapter eight. Verse one. Mm -hmm. I'll begin from verse one again. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Yes. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, mm -hmm. and the name of his second Abiah. Mm -hmm. They were judges in Beersheba, mm -hmm. and his sons walked not in his ways, mm -hmm. but turned aside after Maka and took bribes and perverted judgment. Mm -hmm. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel and to Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and, there, and thy sons walk not in, his, in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the king, but the thing, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and saved other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now, verse 9, Now therefore hear, hear king unto their voice, how bait, how, how bait yet protest solemnly unto them and show, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, this, is, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for, for himself for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariots, and he will appoint him captains over, over thousands and captains over fifties, and will set them to hear, and will set them to hear his ground and to reap okay, his harvest. Okay, my bed. Did the other parts people can read on their own? Jump now to 18. Okay. Okay, verse 18 reads, mm -hmm. And he shall cry out in the day because of your king, which, it, which he shall have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. You see? So God, the Jews were ruled before by the spiritual mind, by God. But they started to admire the other nations. And uh, they, they forced Samuel to, to find them a king. A king was the Adamic mind, like I showed you. And then Samuel now, if you read, when you go home, you, go, you can go and read. Samuel now begins to explain to them what Adamic rulership is, what it does. It takes you from the truth, from God. Just like now, you know, everybody is on edge. Everybody has favoritism. You know, it, it just takes you away from the purpose of God. Um, it, it shows them all that if you go through. But the point I'm trying to make is that people ask for a king or a president, which is not a bad thing because we, we, we live in the Adamic world. And the Bible says he has given Adam 6,000 years. Man has been given 6,000 years to, to live on earth. 6,000, again, is allegorical, please. Don't take it literally. It means something. Remember, six is, is the number of a man. 6,000 years 
to do all sorts of things. But what I was trying to tell you that my point is, when you live on earth, you must still have the mind of God. We are on earth to do the will of God. So whatever you do, whatever you do uh, does not mean it should please you. It should please your ego. Whatever you do should be to the glory of God. It should please God. So as you can see, God has never been a favorite of what you call politics. He told the Jews and he bade them. Verse 9 says, Now therefore listen unto your voice, or unto their voice, God is telling them. However, protest. However, some of tell them the facts unto them and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Show them how it happens. And he shows you, you saw 10, and someone told all the ways of the Lord unto the people that ask him of a king. I'll tell you, if you ask for a king, if you're asking for politics, be ready to have this. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. You will take your sons and, and appoint them for himself. People will join politics. This party and the other party hate each other, you know, hack each other. That's what happens. He's showing you all, all that stuff. You know, you know, you might go in and say, no, me, pastor, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be neutral. There have been men of God who have gone in politics. Because remember, the man of God is not allowed to join politics. That's why you, up to now, come and tell me any man of God who has gone to join politics and they have come out to be, to be clean. But otherwise, this is okay. You guys can vote. You can, you can anticipate. But you should be careful not to lose the truth, not to believe God, not to lose God. Because remember, they will offer you wealth. Remember again, the mind, all of us, we are striving, we are striving to clean our minds from what we have been taught from childhood. Our vision is to be rich, is to have. It's me. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Someone, my, one of my elders told me a long time ago, that may, maybe that's why a man is born with the M uh, on his palm. Because every time it's, it's mine, me and my wife, me and my kids, me, 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 give me. You see? But Christ told us that to be a true Christian, you must reach a level where your heart can say, your will be done, not my will. Are we together? Does that make sense? Any questions? I know we have taken a lot of time to try and say, uh, make our people understand. I know I'm just jumping, jumping. It's a conversation. If you have questions, ask me so that we move on. Any questions? Can we move on? Questions? Mwape, Lumbuka. Leonard, can we move on? Uh, for me, I think it's uh, it's clear. It's clear for you. So we live by the word because the word is spirit. The Bible says that which is born of spirit is spirit. So that's why if um if my mind Remember, God is the mind, the spirit. So what is born of the spirit is, is spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh. So when you join, when you, when you follow the human ideology, you're going to be a fleshly man. Revelation 18.1, let's go to, to Revelation 18.1. There's something we need to begin to understand in the Bible. Revelation 18, 1 reads, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. Remember, angel means messenger. Angel does not send himself. They are, the angels go with an agenda, with a message from someone. And usually the message comes from God, from the word, from the truth. I saw, an, an, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having the great power, 
and the earth was lightened with his glory. That's the son of man. I don't know if you see that. That is the son of man. Jesus Christ was an, it was a, was a great angel. And today, even in, in our midst now, we can see a great angel come down from heaven using my mouth, me as a mouthpiece for the, of the truth we are saying here. Revelation 18, one says, and after these things, I saw another angel, messenger, come down from heaven. I'm coming from heaven. How am I coming from heaven? I'm coming from the scriptures. I'm coming from the truth. Remember, heaven is the scriptures. Or heaven is the truth, but the truth has been written in the scriptures. So it's the scriptures. I'm coming from the truth. Having great power. Power is what? God is the grantor of dominion. Dominion is power. Knowledge. Remember, where does Papa go? What gives me power is the knowledge. Remember, it is said knowledge is power. God is the grantor of dominion. Power. See, remember, remember, remember again, he appeared to Moses out of the burning bush. And Christians were amazed. The burning bush, it was burning and then there was a voice. It's not literally. The Bible is not historical. It's uh, prophetic. When the Bible says he appeared to Moses out of the burning bush, the burning bush are the holy scriptures. Remember, they come to burn your 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 dirty adamic mind it, it it comes to bend those that knowledge that wickedness so in moses he appeared to him from the burning bush remember moses was bringing a stiff naked people from somewhere he needed to bend their minds to clean up their minds to have the mind of uh, of christ so this angel in revelation 18 1 and this angel has been coming through the word in every dispensation, the son of man. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. Knowledge is power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. Remember when Jesus Christ came, the, the, way, the glory of the earth was lightened with glory. Even in our time, on this Zoom, we go home lightened because the angel appeared to us from heaven, from the burning bush. Revelation 18, verse 2, the Bible reads, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, You saw how I, I was crying with a great voice about Babylon. Babylon, the great, is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. We showed you what Babylon is, is the, the city of Gomorrah and Egypt, in which, that's, that's Revelation 11, the city where even Christ our Lord was crucified. It's a city which is rejecting the truth. The Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ being crucified means the truth. Uh, Revelation 11 showed us that the truth is always crucified, and after three and a half days, it rises up, it vindicates itself. And goes back to into the clouds. The clouds are made of vapor, wet, water. Even our words today they are being killed, but one day they will rise, they will, they will resurrect and be, go back to be part of the scriptures, go back into heaven. And he cried mighty with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is, is, is fallen and has become the habitation of devils. No. Adamic minds and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of our fornication. Remember, civilization, Adamic civilization is affected the whole world. That is why I'm here. We need to remember the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. We need to usher in the Sabbath through creating a creating a, a a small or oh, how do you call those a proto kingdom prototype of a kingdom among us which is going to influence the whole world and the kings of the of the earth have committed fornication with her every nation has committed fornication with adamic knowledge and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of our delicacies and this is what our mind is made up we want to be rich with the abundance of Babylon's delicacies. 
Without that, we are depressed. Some of us die from depression. Some of us lose marriages, lose family. My husband doesn't work, he's useless. I'm leaving him for, for a doctor. My wife doesn't work, I'm leaving her for a doctor. We have got our own way of looking at life. But through this Zoom, we are going to create a people who live by the word, both sides, men and women. People who understand. That's why I, I'm always echoing. We need people who love the truth, who love the word. We don't need people who love themselves, people who are going to judge us. We are sick. We are filthy in the spirit. Our minds are full of Adam. Even my mind is Adamic because I was, I was sharpened in my mother's, uh, on my mother's laps. I was sharpened through my relatives and family. I was sharpened in a country which had Adamic uh, 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 laws. So we are, not, we are not okay. That is why we're here. That's why some of us, you see us every Sunday on this Zoom and allowing the way to clean us. Until one day it shall be said, now you are clean by the way which was given unto you. Verse 4, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her. That's what I'm telling you. Please come out of the Adamic mind. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. Remember, when you follow Adamic ways, the consequences are dire. They are bad. You are going to receive of her plagues. Corona is going to hit you. Cancer, HIV, AIDS, because you're not following the word, the truth. Your life will be careless. Obesity, you're going to eat anything because, you know, every facet of your life must be, must be controlled by the word. And you must have a mind of thy will be done, not my will. But if you are coming to this word because there's something you want, you want us to, to scratch your itching ears, you are going to go faster than you came when you realize how unclean we are. Paul says, me who is the least among the, the apostles. God has given favor to sit and listen to the word. Five, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered thy iniquities. You have seen what is happening in the world. Fear, cursing, ritual killing, political violence, people hacking each other. Because God, the truth, always remembers your iniquities, and you are rewarded. Remember, I've said before you, life and death. Blessings and cursing. When you choose Adamic mind, you choose cursings. Either you or me. I'm not, I haven't come here to point and figures. We are pointing at each other's fingers. That's why the word of God is a spoken word, a sword. It has got, it, it's a sharpened both sides. It's cutting me and it's cutting you. Seven, how much he has glorified herself and lived deliciously. Of course, Adamic world is delicious. That's why they say sin is sweet. That's why he, he, when you look at Zoom, how many are you there? Because everyone has gone to delicious Adam. So much torment, you see? It says, uh, um, uh, Revelation 8 again, verse, um, Revelation 18, verse 7 again, how much he has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. It's like, the way he's saying, the more she, she does a delicacy, the, the same measure, she has gone away from God, this Babylon. The same measure to mentor and sorrow give her. For she, has, she, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no, no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Have you seen what's happened to the world? Fear, wars. If it's this year, everything has happened to humanity. The floods, people have died in Germany, in France, the fires in America, the corona universally, you see. Pain, high cost of livings in our country because we have denied the truth. So the plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine and shall be utterly burnt with fire. For strong is the, remember, what I'm trying to tell you is that with this thing you're holding on to, or called Adamic world, is going to be burnt with fire. With fire means the word 
is going to consume it. People are, are, are going to begin to understand the truth and they will change their ways and begin to live right. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. Remember, the word which I speak shall judge you. So when I tell you God is judging, I'm not telling you that literally things happen. No, the word of God shall judge you. You see, 18, 9, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her. And when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for, for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Meaning, the, the, the destruction of the human civilization is imminent. And it's going to come swiftly in one hour, meaning swiftly. But that is determined by the Son of Man. The truth, those who are holding the, the truth. Are we, are we affecting the people in Babylon? I'm not saying let's now go in, in the world and, and begin to preach to people. I, I've told you, how do you uh, and go to preach to people using the, the scriptures? I've told you. The moment we begin to preach the world using our lifestyles, the people you are going to attract to you will be uh, people of caliber, truthful people. So our lifestyle must begin to shine. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine. It says, because the whole world is in darkness, meaning it's in ignorance, arise, shine. Let your, sh you let, let your light shine. So that when they when when the Adamic people see your light, they will run to it because they are in they are in the darkness. Revelation 18, 12 continues. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk. You see, you see, Adamic world is very rich. Scarlet and all the and all thine wood and all manner vessel of ivory and all manner vessel of most precious wood and of brass and iron and, and, and marble. 18, the cinnamon and odors and ointment and frankincense. I'm going to show you how rich American, British, Western tradition is. And wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lasted after I departed from thee, all and all things which were deity and godly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. Because the truth will not, the evil will not vanquish truth. The merchant, the, the 15, the merchant, you can just uh, shut the, yeah, the, okay. Where are we? Um, we are remaining with less than we're remaining with less than 10 minutes, huh? Okay, thanks. Okay. 18 and cried well, okay, 17 for in, in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every ship master and all the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. And cried when they saw the smoke of a burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? Babylon is going to fall, Adamic mind, which is called Egypt and Gomorrah or Sodom, where our, even our, our Lord, the truth, is being crucified. 19, and they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping, of course, rejoice over her. Verse 20, the scripture is saying, Rejoice over her, thou heaven. And he holy apostles and prophets for God has avenged you in on her. God avenging the truth because they are not living according to the truth. They are going against, against the truth. They are rebuking the truth. They are spitting on the truth. 21, and a mighty angel, remember a messenger, took up a stone like a great milestone. I told you, the son of man is the Lord of the Sabbath. It will be messengers with the true word. Who are going to put a last nail in the coffin of Babylon, of the Adamic system? And the mighty angel took up a stone like a great milestone and cast it into the sea, saying, 
Thus, with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more. There is hope, and you know, this system, it looks like it will never end and it's painful, but it's going to end as in one hour. 22, and the voices of harpers and musicians and of pipers and of trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. Parting, even this, this so good, so so called good life, they tell you, you'll be, when you go to New York, you'll be feasting at McDonald's. Ask the, the public health uh, specialist, McDonald's food will kill you. <laughs> you see? Those food are junk food. No, you'll be, you'll be feasting in McDonald's. You'll be feasting in, in this, this, the great places. And no craftsman and whatsoever craft he be shall be found anymore in thee. And the sound of a milestone shall be heard no more at all in thee. 23, and the light of a candle shall shine no more. Even that light, remember light is knowledge, the knowledge, the wickedness, knowledge of Adam shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For they, remember, God told you, listen to the man of God who is alive. One day you will not be here, there for you to hear these words. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets. Remember, Babylon has killed prophets and of saints, Jesus Christ, Moses, everyone, and of, and, and of all that was slain upon the earth. See, because Babylon people who are found in Babylon, we call them mankind. That's why in anthropology, you are called mankind because you are, you are just a kind of a man from the original. The original is supposed to be called man. You're just a kind of man, mankind. You are not complete, but the way it makes you the original man. You see, I know today we started early. The equations are, I mean, the, the time is, 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 is flown so fast. So the new man is coming. That's what I'm saying. And the, the old man should go to sleep. Remember when, when, when Adam came, we went to sleep. When the new man came, when the, the first mind came, the second man mind was asleep. But now God is rising up the, the second mind, which is spiritual. The first mind was physical. That's why I'm, all, I'm always saying, brothers and sisters, it's with a heavy heart to tell you that the West is dying. The Western world is dying. When I say the West, I include also us who have our civilization and our, our lifestyle and our dispensation hooked into the West, but the West is dying. And that's why you, you see me every day here trying to appeal to you to follow the truth. I know sometimes you might just be thinking, what is he talking about? This man is always talking about coming to talk to us about what? You know, we've got few oh, minutes. We have yes, please. Thank you, Mwape. So in these five minutes, we can discuss. People can ask questions. People can, yeah, others can text. Um, maybe just a, just a quick one. Uh, I should say I wanted to clap for you, unfortunately. It's, uh, it's virtual, I couldn't do that. But I want to appreciate um, Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. The way, chapter 18, so to say, the way you broke it down, I think that was extremely, extremely good. Because um, the allegory that's in those scriptures and how what we've been what we've been taught to believe is totally contrary. Uh, and the aspect of the burning bush, because we see we read in books and we see pictures they've taken it from they've taken it in a literal sense. They put the tree there; it's burning. God is talking, but from what we've come to learn is that the burning bush is actually the word. The yes. word has to burn the evil. Mm -hmm. And uh, this also just opened up another aspect of my mind to say, even the lack of fire, the lack of fire where the devil will be thrown, 
it's not a literal it's not in a, in a literal sense but no. this is something figurative it's a scripture yeah so the okay. evil will be bent by the truth remember the way that speaks shall judge you mm -hmm. exactly exactly and uh, i think this this is extremely good mm. it's a, extremely good and i appreciate what i think you're welcome Mate. like i always say these things they're not coming from my head they're coming from the truth I told you, the white man can never teach you God. That's why when you're reading white man's books, white man's explanation of the Bible, I even told you, even King James Version was not black, according to history. The words which we speak are pre-Adamic. Remember, I, I told you, Adam is a white race. Maybe we'll go deeper in explaining that. Not white race as, as in the skin. Adam is a white race, is a white mind, which we also have. We have a white mind because we have been... We, we, we have also been he ruled us so he changed our mind so yeah uh, I, I don't want to continue talking i need people to talk one minute 35 min seconds gone i mean to go mungaela is our phone still okay or oh, you, you can type we will just know that uh, you are here and you got something if you can speak you can speak if you can type you can type mungaela you want to say something Then uh, Leonard, while well, Mungaela is waiting, because time is gone, let me give you a few time, all of you. Leonard? Uh, my network has been bad, so nothing from this end. Okay. Lumbuka, summary, short summary. I'm yes, excited not to have all summer. of you guys here. I'm very excited, and uh, it makes me feel good because I know you are here. With your whole heart, you want to be here. Don't mind whoever lives or, or stays. We are not holy, all of us. Okay, continue. Um, maybe not really a summary, but just appreciating uh, the concept of the dying of the Adamic mind, that every day the Adamic mind is dying mm -hmm. and we are rising to the Christ mind. I think for me that has been the take home message. I, I, that's, I just wanted to say thank you for that. You're welcome. Yes. You know, I know this. I'm not going to do it. You're not going to do it, but the wave is going to do it. That's why we, we need to.